guys, it's Carl. Welcome back to my review of the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra. It's been my daily device now for the past week. My SIM card's in, I've been using it nonstop. Uh, today is currently the 14th of February, so happy Valentine's Day. I'm actually rocking the pink for the day of love. I actually wish I had the burgundy option to show that off, but um, anyways, we'll start off with uh, kind of pricing first. Like I said, I think this is the best Android phone that you can currently get for a premium price. And uh, that's where this phone kind of starts off. It is $1,149, of course, US and Canada, $1,649. And that's for the base level option. So you get eight gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of storage. If you want to up it to the phone that I currently have, 256 gigs and of course, 12 gigs of RAM. I think that's the model to get. I've used the base level option. You honestly, in day-to-day -day use, can't really tell the difference unless you're one of those weird people that, uh, I guess not weird, but playing those graphic intensive games. I'm trying to think of one off the top of my head. Genshin Impact or even the new Dragon Ball Z Legends game for mobile, you won't notice the difference. If you're just stuck scrolling the endless loop of social media apps, if you're using this to multitask, just getting your day-to-day -day stuff done, sending texts, listening to music making calls, sending text messages. This phone is perfect no matter which spec you end up getting. So just decide which storage option is right for you as you no longer have a micro SD card slot. Over to the design, which I think has the most kind of buzz or the talk around it. We'll start off with the camera bump. Um, it's what a lot of people have kind of hated initially off the bat when I saw the renders, when I saw the leaks, actually when I used it a week ago, I thought it kind of looks unfinished, but it's kind of growing on me. I kind of like the clean camera bumps. They actually don't have that little camera module on the back. You just have the lenses sticking out of the back of the phone. And to actually uh, put that in perspective, a lot of people refer to phones as having you know, a stove top, this little, little camera cutout module on the side with the individual stove burners. My new stove will actually look something like this. So shout outs to Pit Cut, Pit Cutching, Pit Cooking, Pit Cutching. Designed some really cool burners. They actually come right out of the countertop. So I think it's futuristic. I think it looks great. Uh, I think a lot of people online agree that uh, Samsung smashed the design. It looks clean, it looks modern, it looks uh, futuristic. And in all honesty, what can you change from a slab of glass with a display on the front? There isn't really too much that we can uh, make these crazy improvements over. So I do think it looks clean, especially compared to say the 13 Pro Max, which is usually a lot of people's daily drivers or the other most popular phone that this will compare to. I made a completely separate video. The iPhone looks dated. The S22 Ultra looks way more modern, way cleaner, and it is slightly, slightly taller and slightly thinner in fact than the Ultra, than the iPhone 13 Pro Max. <laughs> and the rest of the design is pretty typical Samsung, and it kind of builds around the next big feature that has come to the Ultra series, which is the S Pen. And for a bit of a background, we no longer have the Note series. Samsung technically hasn't killed it off yet, but the last Note phone was the Note 20 Ultra. And what I think Samsung is doing, they're taking the best feature from the Note series because technically, when you compare the S20 Ultra and the Note 20 Ultra, they were almost identical and the only difference was the S Pen and the Note series, which usually was the flagship. It had the best specs. It was the best for productivity, of course, with the S Pen. There wasn't really too big of a difference between either of the devices and now Samsung has probably realized that, doesn't take a rocket scientist. So now that S Pen is coming to the Ultra series. So when you look lower down the 22 lineup to the Note 22, sorry, the S22, plus the S22 standard. You can't get the S Pen, and this is what makes the Ultra Edition more premium. It gets that extra feature, and if you need that extra productivity, you now have the S Pen. So of course, it's that squared off design, which I kind of love. I'm a big G-Wagon fan, so I'm always a fan of the square lines. Of course, you have the slightly rounded display. It's ever so slight, and I think that's a personal preference. You either love or hate it. I am a personal fan of flatter displays, but because it goes almost to the edge, you get the slightest little curve. The downside, you can't really apply a screen protector because uh, no real glass 
on screen protectors curves that well. So that's kind of a uh, little trade off. It feels super premium to hold almost seamless from the display all the way around to the metal banding to the back, which now actually the entire phone is 12% stronger with of course, Gorilla Glass Victus. And for those S Pen users, you still get all of the great benefits, all of the stuff that has come from the Note series. So Create Note, uh, Smart Select Screen Write, you have all of those nice little features. And I will say now the writing experience on the S Pen or using the S Pen on the S22 Ultra is now faster. So they've increased latency all the way from nine milliseconds to 2.8 milliseconds. And they actually use that with AI. They can actually predict where the S Pen will be on the screen. So it's almost like you're writing with an actual pen and paper. It's smooth, it's seamless. And uh, if you are a big fan of jotting down notes, if you're a bit of an artist, which I definitely am not, I think a lot of note users or previous note users, this is the phone that you've been waiting for. One little design aesthetic that kind of bugs me, you cannot get the S Pen matched to the color body of the phone. Unfortunately, they're all black and the only part that matches is sadly just the tip. Naughty joke for the day, it's Valentine's Day. Last but not least, color options, even though I know most people end up rocking a case on it, but uh, the new burgundy, like I said, for Valentine's Day, I think that looks pretty sleek. The green was my favorite, but if you wanna keep it uh, secret and safe. Keep it secret. Keep it safe. Matte black is nice, the white is nice, and they do have that matte finish. So it's nice for the Ultra line. I think they look gorgeous, and uh, I would say that uh, they're some of the best looking phones that you can currently get. And in the end, no matter what color option you end up choosing, you can always grab a D-Brand skin just to kind of customize it to actually give it a bit of protection. And also, if you just wanna get your leather patina game going, they offer that now as a skin option as well. For my actual day-to-day -day use, the phone is an absolute beast. And like I said, I've downloaded the most graphic intensive games, obviously multitasking, scrolling the endless loop of uh, social media it can do. Using the S Pen to stay productive, it crunches through everything that you throw at it. It is based on the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, platform, which I've tested previously. If you are a true Geekbench junkie or a spec junkie, you'll see that it compares to the 13 Pro Max. The numbers aren't as good, but for the experience, because you're comparing iOS to Android, they both perform, I would say, flawlessly. No hiccups, no lag, no weird stutters that you sometimes get with Android. So it's been really, really good. And I have to give props to Samsung for One UI 4.1. It's gotten cleaner, it's gotten better. I love how you can change some of the themes now. Even the Samsung messaging app has gotten better. It kind of mimics what we see over on stock Android on Google. I will still sadly say though, Samsung still pushes its stock apps. It makes you log into your Samsung account. It still unfortunately has Bixby, has Samsung Health. They're not the greatest. Obviously bloatware has gone down a lot in the past couple of years, but what I would kill for an S22 Ultra Google Play Edition, who remembers those stock Google phones when uh, you know Samsung combined with Google to create a stock phone, that would be my ultimate wish list. Um, if anyone remembers those, those things were mighty. That would be, I think, the sweetest little phone. Battery life, which I think a lot of you wanna know about. For my day-to-day -day use, I get around seven and a half, eight hours of screen on time. I have lasted till the end of the day. I know that's more than the typical user. I still have maybe 20% left by the end. Right now, it's around three o'clock. I'm at 37%. Uh, it isn't as good as the 13 Pro Max. I don't think any phone does come close to that, but you can still get a day, day and a half if you're a light user. Um, and even if you don't use the phone as much minimally, I think you can squeak out too. But 5,000 milliamps of juice, it's good for me if a phone, if I use it for seven to eight hours, if it can last till the end of the day, that's typically my benchmark. And I think ultra users or S22 ultra people will use their phone a lot. It's good, it'll last you till the end. That's awesome. And one last thing to mention for Samsung, which I think they absolutely smash, they now give software support for four years to come. So right now, Android 12, that theoretically means up to Android 16, you will always get updates. And that typically is the refresh cycle for most people. I know uh, being a techie, being a true junkie or a tech junkie, you want to upgrade your device every single year or every six months. For most people, four years is the typical refresh cycle. And that's awesome to see Samsung support that. Um, so yeah, till Android 16, your phone will constantly be getting updates, which I think rocks. The next thing which should get a lot of praise is the display. And I think that's no surprise for a Samsung flagship. They make some of the best panels. The display 
is just drop dead gorgeous. It's 6.8 inch quad HD adaptive. And before the S21 actually had an LTPO display that went from 10 to 120 Hertz. This goes all the way down to one Hertz up to 120. So when you're on a say, dead page. When you're not really looking at anything, if it's stuck on a web page, that can go down to one hertz. So you actually save a ton of battery. And that's what helps this phone get such decent battery life. That's what helps it push it to that day, day and a half life. It's nice and vibrant. And it's actually one of the brightest phones, if not the brightest phone that you can currently get. So up to 1750 nits peak brightness. So when I've been viewing it outside, it looks exactly the same as inside. It uh, is such a good display to look at. And what I love on the S22 Ultra, they didn't include some of the finicky under display tech that we saw in the Z Fold 3 where the uh, camera actually lit up weirdly. We just have the standard hole punch cutout, 40 megapixel camera. It isn't a large notch. It just does what it needs to do. It takes decent selfies. They have gotten slightly better, but uh, I still think the iPhone takes some better selfies. That's of course, personal preference. Going on to the camera module, which I talked about the design. I talked about uh, each of these just being separate. We have similar sensors, but they have been improved. We've got the 108 megapixel wide, the 12 megapixel ultra wide, and the two 10 megapixel telephotos. Improved from the S21 for sure, especially on the main sensor. So zooming in, photos look a lot clearer. And I actually found that when you go up to 100 times space zoom, I won't say that's a need to have feature. It's kind of just one of those things that you do when you test out the phone. The stabilization is a lot better. Samsung's computational photography has gotten a lot better. So things look crisper, a lot more contrasty. And I would say even the dynamic range uh, has been really, really good. I've been having a ton of fun shooting with this. Uh, of course, sample shots here and even some against the good old iPhone, which I think is usually the benchmark standard. And I will say Samsung did improve a lot on video, especially for stabilization, especially for that ultra wide sensor and the main, it looks silky, silky smooth, which I'm a fan of. And for these actual video clips that you end up using or uploading to social, uh, I've got this little one of Link uh, uploading to Instagram right now. A lot of you said that uh, Samsung worked with Snapchat and um, Instagram. I believe it was only Snapchat. I will say the video compression has gotten better. I still think it looks best over on an iPhone, at least now for Instagram, Snapchat, and I believe TikTok, they use the stock camera sensor, which is good. I think it might be a tad bit of iOS bias for me. I still think it looks better on the iPhone, like I mentioned, but definitely way more usable. So uh, yeah, for all you Android users, I think you will definitely love that. Extra camera features. I know that you can download Samsung's raw camera app, which you can actually take 16 bit photo with, but they've also vastly improved night photos. Once again, sample photos are kind of left here. They've done a lot of extra changes to the computational photography. So by far way better than the S21, things are looking pretty good. Probably not as good as Google's computational photography for their night mode, but uh, very, very similar. So I would say the camera, currently one of the best that you can get. Um, and it'll be interesting when the iPhone 14 launches and of course the Pixel 7 slash 7 Pro will do a full comparison. But uh, as of right now, one of the best Android cameras that you can get. And uh, yeah, overall, that's just been my experience. I think a lot of Note users have been waiting for this. I think a lot of people that want a very premium device with the best feature set. Of course, if you're an S Pen user, I think you'll love this. One thing that I have noticed though, uh, because I've been forcing myself to use the S Pen, I wish the camera layout was actually kind of like the Pixel 6 that went across the little um, Tron or the uh, Daft Punk visor, just to have an even surface. Because when you write down notes, which is what this does now, the Note series or the S Ultra series, you get quite a bit of wiggle and wobble, especially down in the bottom right corner. So say you're drawing, you can see, and probably hear the clankiness of that phone because all the cameras are stacked or the camera modules are stacked on one side. Um, just something to consider. I know that most people will probably write down notes or use the S Pen with the phone in hand, but uh, I think a lot of artists, or if you're just jotting down notes in general, that would kind of bother me. But yeah, other than that, I think Samsung did a great job. There's obviously little nitpicky things which I think can still be improved on, but um, overall, a solid device for a very solid price tag. And I think that's it. If I missed anything, let me know down below in the comments. Happy to uh, answer any questions. And uh, yeah, good luck ordering your next 
S22 Ultra. We'll catch the rest of you in one of my next vids. Peace. Happy Valentine's Day.